What's up, y'all, and welcome back to another Thai Talk. Now, today, I'm coming back with something special to talk about an old show that I really love that I feel like does not get the intention and the praise that it deserves. And that's Soul Food, the series. And everybody should know that's how love goes. It's good for the soul. Soul Food the series is of course based off the 1997 cult classic film of the same name, Soul Food. The series ran for five seasons between 2000 and 2004 on Showtime. It stars Nicole Ari Parker, Vanessa Estelle Williams, and Melinda Williams as the three Joseph sisters, Terry, Max, and Bird. The show is an hour-long drama that really still centers around some of the same, that same concept of family and the emphasis on soul food and that connection to love and family and home that that has in the black community, right? And this show really has some, what I would consider some heavy hitters and black TV and film behind it. So we have some people like Felicia D. Henderson who developed the show and she had also been a part of other shows such as Family Matters, Fresh Prince, Moesha, Sister Sister, Everybody Hates Chris, Gossip Girl, The Quad, The Punisher series on Netflix. Then you also have Salim McKeel, who is the husband of Mara Brock Akil, and together, you know, they had did projects like Girlfriends, The Game, the movie Jumping the Broom, Sparkle, Being Mary Jane, and Black Lightning. And then, of course, <laughs> a person that people love to hate now, particularly, but Kenya Barris, who also worked on Girlfriends and The Game, Blackish Mixed This Grownish. Black AF, Girls Trip, Shaft, coming to, coming to America, the sequel. So those are just some of the people who kind of had an impact behind the scenes, some of the creatives behind this wonderful show. You know, I was a person that I, I remember watching the show when I was growing up and it was on air. My cousin, I would spend the summer with my cousins in Augusta, Georgia, and she was watching it. I probably had no business watching it with them at that age, but I did. And I remember, I, I think I even got my parents to get Showtime when I got back home so I can see uh, those other, the last season, I believe. But, you know, I recently revisited this show. I think I first, I saw the, I saw the movie trending on Twitter and on social media um, around sometime after the holidays, I believe, or around the new year. And it was particularly talking about the character Terry and was she the, the real villain or not, right? And so that kind of just got me reinvested. I was like, I actually haven't seen this movie in forever and it's on HBO Max. So I watched the movie and then I was like, I'm gonna just go head in and I went to watch the show. Something I found out a couple of years ago, I think when the pandemic and quarantine first started, was that this show is not available on any streaming service. I remember during the pandemic, I was wanting to watch this show, I think, and I had signed up for whatever the Showtime <laughs> streaming platform is just to get it and realize, yo, Soul Food is not on here. And it's still not available on any streaming. I don't know what the reason behind that is, but fortunately for me in my viewing experience, not necessarily that these that these creatives and the people behind the show are getting any you know extra funds from it, but the sh someone has uploaded most of the episodes, almost all of the episodes for the entire series on YouTube. And you know, I went through and I was watching. And now really for the rest of this video, where I really, I really just wanna talk about some of the similarities and the differences between the movie and the show. 
and really just hit on some of these topics that this show dived into, particularly for the black community at such a pivotal time in the early 2000s. All right. So in this next part, I'm going to try my best not to spoil too much for y'all in case you know there's people who have not watched the show and you're using this video as a reason that you go watch, okay? So we're going to jump into the similarities, okay? Just like the movie, the show is narrated by the character Ahmad, who is the oldest son of the middle daughter, Maxine, and her husband, Kenny, played by Rock McDunbar. Aaron Meeks portrays Amar in the TV series. And, you know, so you definitely, he's a series regular. So you definitely throughout the show get scenes and Amar gets storyline, right? Like he, he has a storyline, a prominent role in almost every episode, okay? So next will be Irma P. Hall who reprises her role as Big Mama. In seasons one and two, typically you will see Big Mama in either a flashback or as a ghost or presence that Ahmad was like talking to or chatting with, right? And then as a flashback, of course, they will use her as like motivation to show motivation of characters. Maybe some of the decisions they were making, maybe a conflict they were dealing with that episode. After season two, I think they really stopped with the Ahmad talking to Big Mama part. And then it's mostly she's used maybe in flashbacks. And I feel like very, from what I remember, very sparingly seasons three. I don't think I saw her in season four at all, but she definitely, I think, came back in season five. Particularly, I think she showed up in the final episode of the series. So, Big Mama is still there in some type of capacity. And then, I will say the other thing is that at some point in the show, maybe not necessarily throughout the entire show, um, but particularly maybe in that first season, first one or two seasons, each character that has some substantial role in the movie has some type of role in the show. So, of course, you know, the sisters are there, their, hu their husbands are there. You see Miles, so he was Terry's husband that slept with Cousin Faith. You do see Cousin Faith a little bit. So they, they all are there, right? So those are, I would say, boiled down the similarities of the show. You know, Ahmad is narrating just like he did in the movie. Big Mama has a presence. They keep those, most of those characters that had a significant role in the movie show up at some point in the show. And of course, you know, like I talked about earlier, that family connection, that... That, that soul food, that Sunday dinner, almost, I will say, because of the way each episode, I guess the timing of each episode, they almost seem like that they last a week, per se, because there's like a Sunday dinner in almost every episode, right? So, those are the similarities between the show and the movie. So now I'm going to dive into some of the differences between the show and the movie. I think the biggest difference to me, especially after re-watching the movie and going straight into the show, was the sisters. Particularly the sister Bond. Now, the sisters' personalities was pretty much about the same, right? Like, Terry was the bougie rich sister. Maxine was the down to earth little um get up in your face sister and then Bird was the younger fun free spirited sister right and so their personalities were really about the same I would say maybe the only difference is that Maxine was more kind of Afrocentric in this in the series in comparison to what Biblical A Fox portrayed 
in the movie, but yeah, that was the only difference in their personalities. But their sisterly bond was significantly stronger in the series. You know, the movie highlighted that Terry and Max didn't really get along, but then you know, only it only seemed like like Max had that. Vivica A. Fox's Max had that like focus on the family, right? But in the show that was done away with, you can pretty much say that all three of the sisters had the same level of love and connection for the family. Particularly, now I will spoil this because this was in the movie, right? So particularly, I don't know if y'all remember because I didn't remember until I rewatched the movie. Was there was a scene in the movie? When during the part when the sisters are kind of in conflict about to sell Big Mama House or not sell it, right? And so there's a scene in the movie where Terry meets uh, Maxine and Bird for lunch. When Terry sits down, Vanessa Williams that played Terry sits down, and um, Bill K. Fox Maxine's like throws these papers like, "Yeah, I'm stopping you selling the house." Da 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 da, right? And Terry didn't say much. She just looked at the paper, got up, and left. And then afterwards, you know, Bird, like, ran to the bathroom. And she, like, come out. She's pregnant. She hesitant to say. But um, Maxine figures it out. And, you know, that scene kind of, there was a lot of coldness in that scene, right? And you will get from that scene, you will figure that, oh, Bird didn't feel comfortable ready to tell Terry that. Terry got up and left, didn't really acknowledge. And... For me, from what I've seen in the show, that level of coldness would have n never happened in the show. That's just not the relationship that was established between them. It was very loving. I mean, particularly um, what you didn't see in the movie, you didn't really see Terry and Matt's love on each other at all in Soul Food, the movie, but you, you get to see that in the series. Now, don't get me wrong, there are fights. In fact, big ones. I mean, one of my favorite <laughs> scenes or fights, arguments on a TV show, period, happens in this show. Where are you going? I'm not going to disrespect Mama's memory by standing over her grave having an argument. Well, guess what? Don't you think we need to talk about this? Yeah, but not over there. Here we go. This ain't got shit to do with what's going on in my house. Our what house? You only own a third of it. Oh, now you sound like Terry. Whatever. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It's supposed to mean that ever since Miss Fang got this little job of hers, she's been acting all damn high and mighty. Oh, but it's time know. somebody told you, you fell ass backwards into a promotion and you ain't nothing but a housewife and a baby-making machine. Well, a uh, baby machine? Baby yeah, machine. a baby-making machine. Shit, you machine. going to something you ain't got to worry about becoming her bird. Since you ain't having sex, you done kicked your husband out the house again. Oh, you know, hey, hey, you need to mind your... You wait a minute. You got to watch your mouth. You watch it. And let's focus on the real issue. No, is the issue, Terry. So why don't you just stop trying to control everybody's life for once in your life? I'm not controlling everything. Oh, yes, you me. are controlling. You try to control everything. That's why you can't keep a goddamn man. Oh, really? I thought it was because I didn't fling my legs open for every lesbian or high school math teacher that comes along. But they, you know, it's just a level of sisterly love that this show had that to me was missing in the movie and I guess because in the movie you know they had to have like an antagonist and Terry quote-unquote was kind of like one of the antagonists in the movie to Vivica A. Fox's Maxine as a protagonist right uh, but yeah sisterly bond very significant and plays a very um big role in the show i mean they had they would have a sister scene like almost every episode where it's just them or they're talking about something connecting about something right now the next biggest difference i kind of want to talk about is their father was mentioned a lot in this tv show and from the movie he was not mentioned much other than I think they mentioned his gambling problem. They mentioned that he might have had some money stored away, but they didn't really talk about Jeremiah Joseph, which is their father's name, that much in the movie. He didn't get hinted to that much or alluded to. 
But in the show, he is featured in many flashbacks. They use him as a way to, you know, kind of explain some of the character choices, motivations, much in the way they do with the flashbacks with Big Mama. Sometimes the father, um, Jeremiah Joseph, is in those flashbacks. And it really, you can really tell how, I guess, their relationship with their father had an impact on the characters. And the show made a point to highlight that. Even... Particularly, I would say more in the first season than any other. I think it was more significant and you felt it more in the first season because you didn't see him at all in the movie. And then, of course, the last difference I would kind of highlight would be, you know, the husbands had substantial storylines themselves as well, you know. You didn't really get, I mean, what do you know about Kenny from the movie, right? You don't really know much about Kenny. You know a little bit about Lim, played by Mackay Pfeiffer, because he had been locked up, had to get a job, da 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 And then you got some with Miles, because you knew he wanted to be a be in his band, and he had a little, him and Terry's marriage wasn't going that well. But each of the husbands in the series had a significant role. Um, or significant storylines where you got to know them, maybe some about their past, uh, um, saw them develop and grow and move and shake or things like that, right? So I would say that is a difference. Now, albeit this is early 2000s, right? So some of their thoughts, <laughs> some of the male character, um, Thoughts were, I mean, a little toxic, but, you know, in the movie, in the in the TV series, Liam is played by Darren Dwight Henson. You may remember him from, like, Stuck the Yard. That's really the biggest, the only other thing I really remember him from, Stuck the Yard, even though that was after this show ended. Um, again, like I said earlier, Rockman Dunbar. Y'all may know him now. Oh, well, you know him as the the husband from that Tyler Perry movie, uh, A Family That Praise. You know, he the one who backed hands so not late then. And then I think he also plays Angela Bassett's husband in 911. Uh, you might have to correct me if I'm wrong on that. And he played Pookie in the game. Y'all know Pookie from the game. Um, that's with Tasha Mac, you know, having a kid with Tasha Mac. And then Terry's love interest throughout the, most of the five season run, um, of course, because she divorced Miles or she was getting a divorce from Miles. Y'all know that from the movie, right? But her love interest was Damon Carter, played by Boris Kojo, that, that actress, Nicole Ari Parker and Boris actually went along to get married and have their own family, right? So I'll say those are the differences between these between the movie and the show. So again, this show had five pretty strong seasons. The first two felt very 90s still to me when I was doing my watch and I was like, yeah, this is very 90s, very 90s. Um, and they also had about 20 episodes each in those first two seasons. But then there was like a little shift in the third season. The third and fourth season only had 10 episodes. And then the final season had about 14. And for me, I felt like that was a great move for the show. Because it seemed more, I would say more condensed, more quality. I actually felt like the episodes were more of quality once they cut down on the length of the season. The show was one of the first successful long-running dramatic series that starred mostly black people. Um, and, you know, of course, black people have been having sitcoms for years, right? But there were there had not been that many hour-long dramatic series that starred an all-black cast. And, of course, you know... You have them so much now, right? You can you look at what Empire was, what Queen Sugar is, what Greenleaf um, 
even some shows that maybe uh, weren't that great, right? But have been able to exist, I would say, since that time in the last decade that have been dramatic series starring all black cast. Those are, I think, part of this show's legacy that it was able to be an, an acclaimed, um, an acclaimed, long running black dramatic series on a pay network mind you on showtime this was a channel that people had to pay for right so it's not it's not a cbs or nbc a abc that people can used to be able to plug their antenna up back in the day and turn it down and it worked you know or just uh plug their TV in and they automatically got those channels. This was a channel that people had to subscribe to. And this also was a show that hit on a lot of powerful topics. It had episodes and storylines centered around addiction, suicide, mental health, racism, of course. This show had queer and trans characters. It talked about gentrification abortion and women's rights women's bodies women in the workplace um, had an episode around hiv and the stigma around that uh, i mean it even had an episode that was kind of the equivalent to cancer culture right now in the sense where one of the characters did something or said something that kind of got broadcasted to on TV inside of the show, um, like a news station, and you know, and that character started receiving some flack about that, right? So almost like a little bit of cancel culture. Um, I think for one that this show has a very underrated theme song. I mean, when you hear people talk about the best theme songs of shows, I don't hear people talking about this show that much. Uh, which I don't hear people talking about this show that much in general, which is why I want to do this video. But I just definitely feel like this theme song is slept on. I mean, listen to it. And everybody should know that's how love goes. It's good for the soul. No, oh, I got a long way to go, but it won't. This is, I think it's a slept on show, a slept on theme song, and I think it is a show that every black person should watch. I think if you enjoy the movie at all, I believe you are going to enjoy this show even more, actually. Um, yeah, like I said, the, the show is not on any streaming services right now so i know that is like a headache but you can find all the episodes on youtube i believe maybe there was only like one episode that would not play due to like a rights issue or something i believe and that was um episode maybe in like season three or two something like that 
but I, don't, I was able to watch almost every other episode. I know that necessarily don't um, get the money to the people and the creatives, the black creatives and actors that help make this show happen. But right now is the only way um, that you can get this show unless, you know, of course, you buy, buy the series if you can find it. You know, I personally have the final season on DVD. I, I think I've lost a few. I maybe have lost a few discs in the years. Because, of course, it's almost been like 20 years since this show ended. Uh, or since this show was on. And so, I did. I've, I've had this final season DVD. Um, and then, you know, of course, you can find other other um you can find dvd sets of other seasons so i definitely encourage you to get it i think one time it was on syndication for like tv one or something like that but yeah so fool the series i think it is a show that all of you should watch i will be if you have watched the show i would love to talk about it in the comments maybe which characters did you like? Um, I, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts about the characters as far as like, boy, if you if you go back and see my, look at my timeline when I was re-watching this, because you know, I, I live tweet my thoughts. I had a lot of thoughts about Liam throughout the series and the mistakes and same things he was making. Uh, but I definitely, I could talk about this show for days with everybody. Like, again, it got one of the best arguments or fights that I ever seen on the show uh, and then yeah this 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 is black excellence soul food series is definitely black excellence and yeah I think everyone should watch it and yeah, I would love to hear and talk to y'all throughout the comments you can hit me up in the DM if you want to Maybe not spoil stuff for people, but yeah, I would love to talk to y'all more about Soul Food. And thank y'all for watching this Ta Talk. See y'all next time.